Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The long-awaited 2014 South African Defence Force review has been published, indicating that South African military is in a critical state of decline. Senior Deputy Editor Keith Campbell joins me in studio to examine the report's key points. Hi Keith. Local media recently widely reported a Reuters story which seems to have been a preview of the Defence Force review. Is the Defence Force in such bad shape? Well, the answer at an uh, uh, important level is yes. Look, the situation of the Defence Force varies from arm to arm, from the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, the Medical Health Services, and they can vary within uh, a particular branch from uh, unit to unit. Uh, certainly, the Navy, for example, uh, has been significantly modernized in recent years. The Air Force has also received uh, modern equipment, but there have been issues with spare parts, for example. Uh, there are also issues uh, with the budget uh, being inadequate to properly support the personnel and the equipment uh, that the Defence Force has and the operations it has undertaken. The Defence Force has been heavily involved in peacekeeping operations in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, uh, it's been involved in Darfur in Sudan. Uh, it is involved uh, with anti-piracy patrol in the Mozambique Channel. This was all, has all been done despite the fact that the previous uh, conception of how the Defence Force was used was that it would not actually be used in this way and certainly not on this scale. So it has been a situation that it's been underfunded and overworked and that means it's been driven into the ground, uh, basically. Uh, of course it reached its nadir when South Africa uh, overextended itself by deploying a woefully inadequate force in the Central African Republic with effectively no support and the result of course was the um, well the soldiers behaved with great uh, heroism but it was a defeat in the Battle of Bangui and South Africa had to withdraw from the Central African Republic. The, so yes there are serious problems. As you've mentioned um, South Africa is involved in UN peacekeeping missions in Africa. Is it feasible for us to continue with these efforts? Well. That's a key point uh, in the defence uh, review. The thing is, the current situation means that the defence force is not able to sustain these operations without suffering damage in terms of uh, money not being available for other things, in terms of being uh, un unable to adequately maintain and operate and train personnel. Uh, for other missions. Uh, we have uh, basically the, the, the need to sustain these missions and it's politically almost impossible for South Africa to pull out of them is causing damage in the wider defence force. So the, there have to be changes, uh, the have to be uh, improvements to allow these uh, missions to be continued without damaging the wider defence force, to have a situation in which uh, money is not being taken from Peter to pay Paul, but which both Peter and Paul are properly funded. And does the Defence Review consider the defence industry at all? Oh yes, there's a whole chapter devoted to, to the, the defence industry. It, it uh, recognises the South African defence industry is critically important in the country's uh, defence uh, make up defence system that without an effective local defence industry the defence force could not function effectively. Um, it would like to see, it urges the government provide better support for the local defence industry to bring in for example multi-year contracts so that the local defence companies know uh, several years in advance uh, what they're going to be producing and delivering to the uh, local uh, defence force 
and providing a basis uh, for them to do the planning and, of course, a basis on which they can launch export sales drives. It also encourages the government to actively support export sales of South African defence material. You know, when you talk about defence industry, people kind of think of weapons, but the defence industry is much, much more than weapons. It's uh, electronics. It's, um, well, it goes all the way down to field rations, the manufacture and sale of field rations. Uh, so there's a huge range from uh, weapons and uh, uh, things that go buying at one end to very basic things like uh, the ability to provide field maintenance kits or field rations, etc. So it's a huge spectrum that is involved in the defence industry that could be supported by uh, the South African government and the South African Defence Force through, uh, as I say, multi-year contracts and things like that. Also, uh, they identify certain areas of technology that they, f that Defence Review and its team that drew it up believe it's critically important that South Africa has sovereign and sovereign national capability to design, to develop uh, and to manufacture, especially in an area known in modern military jargon as C4 ISTAR, which is Command, Control, Communications, Computers, Intelligence, Surveillance, Target Acquisition and Reconnaissance, uh, which is critically important there in modern warfare. And they also identify unmanned uh, vehicles, both air vehicles, land vehicles, undersea vehicles as another key area. These are just two examples. But they warn against trying to replicate the situation under the days of apartheid when South Africa tried to develop a defense industry that could do everything, uh, warning that this is not economically viable. One interesting little aspect is uh, a suggestion that if there are certain niche areas that are not commercially viable in South Africa, then the government should consider setting up state-owned entities that would produce these systems for the defense force. Uh, the, the Defence Review ref, re, refers to these as state-owned enterprises, but it would be more accurate to describe such things as arsenals, uh, because uh, an organisation that set up ex explicit expectations going to make a loss can hardly be called an enterprise. So, yes, uh, the, the Defence Review recognises the importance of the defence industry and of associate matters like a defence industry intellectual property, research and development and other uh, such aspects. Great. Thanks, Keith. That is the Second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.